Amiga, do you ever feel caught between two worlds? You cherish your cultural background, but sometimes it clashes with the realities of raising a family in modern America. You might feel pressured to fulfill traditional expectations, yet you crave a life that allows you to be your true authentic self. If you're a Latina mom nodding your head right now, I see you and I get it. Balanced motherhood is more than your average mommy coaching program. It's a supportive comunidad designed specifically for you. I understand the unique challenges you face navigating between generations and culturas while forging your own path as a mama. Stop feeling like you have to choose between your roots and your future. Balanced motherhood empowers you to create a life that celebrates your heritage, embraces your motherhood journey, and prioritizes your own happiness. Spots are limited. Don't miss out on this opportunity to connect with a supportive community and create a more balanced life. Visit the link in the show notes to join the waitlist for the next Balanced Motherhood cohort. I can't wait to meet you. Hola, hola, amiga. Did you know that there are so many benefits in going with a chiropractor before, during, and after pregnancy? I honestly had never heard of this until I was 36 weeks pregnant with my second baby, and that was because he was in a breech position. If it wasn't for my chiropractor, which, by the way, shout out to Dr. Eric, I would have probably had a C-section due to having a breech baby. In this week's episode, you'll listen to my story about going to chiropractic care as a pregnant mama of a breech baby, and it was an honor to have had this conversation with a special guest. Doctora Angie Resendez is a practitioner who is helping people of all ages regain their health. She helps pregnant women, newborns, children, and grown-ups as well. She is the founder and owner of Bright Futures Chiropractic, located in Arlington Heights, Illinois, and in Chicago's Pilsen neighborhood. Doctora Resendez is a graduate of the prestigious Palmer College of Chiropractic in Davenport, Iowa, and has completed an additional 250 hours of training through the International Chiropractic Pediatric Association to better serve the health needs of pregnant women, families trying to conceive, and children. I am so excited to have her on the show so that you can learn more about chiropractic care. If you are trying to conceive or just had a baby, this episode is for you. And guess what? Doctora Resendez has shared a special offer exclusively for the Viva La Mami community. If you are local to the Chicago area and you're concerned about yourself or your little one, or if you're pregnant or looking to get pregnant in the future and exploring to see if chiropractic care can even make a difference, then for the first 20 listeners of the podcast who mentioned this week's episode during the month of November 2023, Bright Futures is offering their consultation, which is usually $150, you'll get it for only $47. They have two offices, one in the Pilsen neighborhood of Chicago and the other one in Arlington Heights, which is in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. So whichever one works best for you, feel free to call them at 224-764-1644. And again, this is only for 20 slots. So if that's something that you want to explore, give them a call. You don't want to miss this opportunity. I had a wonderful conversation with Dr. Resendez, and I'm sure you'll learn a lot about chiropractic care as much as I did. So no te lo pierdas. Welcome to the Viva La Mami podcast. I am your host, Jessica Cuevas. I am a mother of two on a mission to help redefine the meaning of motherhood as a modern Latina mom. Motherhood can be a complex journey, interwoven in two identities that often make us feel ni de aquí ni de allá. Viva la Mami is committed to providing you with knowledge, tools, and support to navigate the challenges and triumphs of motherhood as Latina moms. On the show, we'll be discussing culturally relevant topics that will help inform and empower you in whichever season you are in on your motherhood journey. We'll be joined by Latina moms, experts and professionals who can offer advice, practical tips, relatable stories, and honest conversations. So bring your cafecito as I invite you to be a part of this space 
as we create comunidad about the exciting and challenging parts of being a mommy. Ahora, vámonos. Hola, hola, Angie. How are you? Good, good. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate what you do specifically in chiropractic care. I think it is so important that the Latina community needs to know more about it. And so by you being here and amplifying your practice and your expertise, hopefully people can consider a chiropractor, especially as it relates to fertility, pregnancy, and postpartum. And so this is like the purpose of this episode to inform us a little bit more about the benefits of seeking a chiropractor when one is trying to conceive or when they're pregnant or, you know, when they're just having or who just had a baby. And so if you can tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself. Yes. So the Dr. Angie Resendez. I am an entrepreneur. I'm a pediatric prenatal chiropractor. I'm a wife. I'm a mom of three. My youngest is four months. My oldest is four and a half years old. So I'm totally in it with all the new moms out there. I'm like super passionate and just really excited to be here today because I feel like so many people don't know about chiropractic care and how it can help, especially in pregnancy. You know, I've talked to a few individuals who are like, oh, I don't want to get pregnant again because my last pregnancy was just so rough. It was just so uncomfortable. And I'm like, hey, there's other alternatives, other methods out there. So I'm excited to dive deep into that today. Uh, my parents are from Mexico, Zacatecas, Mexico. And so I still feel really tied and connected to my roots. But it's interesting because I grew up in a very white dominant neighborhood. And I don't think I actually, I, you know, recognize the beauty and the uniqueness of being Latina until I was in college and I joined a mm -hmm. sorority and I was around other people that look like me and as a little kid you just want to fit in mm -hmm. so I feel like I share that unique perspective with some of my fellow individuals that grew up in the suburbs so yeah yeah that's awesome congrats on the new baby it's Thanks. awesome that you and I have a baby that are pretty close in age so we're all experiencing the four month you know, milestones. I'm experiencing the four month hair loss. Whew. Oh my gosh, that's so real. I parted my hair the other way just for this interview. <laughs> I'm wearing a headband just to co <laughs> cover my receding hairline, oh. which I'm like, oh, I'm making fun of my husband, but now here I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I know that I prepared a couple of questions, but I'm curious, which wasn't included in the questions that I sent. I'm curious what made you interested in chiropractic care or being a chiropractor? That's a good question. I feel like a lot of times, at least I feel, and they tell us in chiropractic college, like for many of you, you didn't choose chiropractic. Chiropractic care chose you. Mm -hmm. And I didn't actually get my first chiropractic adjustment until I was 18 years old and I started working for a chiropractor. And when he took my paperwork, some of the things I discussed, I was like, I grew, I had asthma, I always had my inhaler, I played soccer, but I like always had my inhaler and always had to use it. Growing up, I was always sick, so chronic colds and coughs, and my mom did what she knew was best, and that was go to the doctor, get an antibiotic, get a medication, recover. So I'd miss a lot of days of school, and I just thought that was normal. I didn't realize that was not normal to go like a long time without getting sick, and it wasn't until I turned 18 and started chiropractic care as a benefit of working there, and I remember eight months later, we like check, he checked in with me, and he's, you know, what's changed since you've been under care? And I was like, you know, not really, not a lot. I still feel the same. I feel great, maybe more energy and I sleep better. And so he went through all of the things that I reported I had and he was like, it says here you use inhaler all the time. Have How often have you had to use it in the last eight months? And I was like, you know what? I don't even take my inhaler around anymore. And then he was like, okay, you had hair that you get sick about every month, every other month, you know, how, how's that been? And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is the first time in eight months that I have like, ever in my life gone this long without getting sick. And that's when I realized like, if my mom knew that chiropractic care could have made a difference in my immune system and my health and my chronic colds and coughs growing up, she would have at least explored it or you know looked into it. Um, but she didn't know, she, she did what she knew and that was to you know go the traditional route. Um, mm -hmm. So that's how I got into chiropractic care and was super interested in pediatric world. And then 
Fast forward to 2019 when I gave birth to my daughter. She was a preemie at 30, we were induced at 32 weeks due to preeclampsia. And I, had already, I was already in the pediatric world and realm, but I didn't really understand the part about, um, you know, we call it the perfect storm. So it's IVF, we did IVF for her to conceive. Mm -hmm. um, there's stress along with that, stressful pregnancy. We're in a society that like birth isn't, Empo as empowering as it could be or as it should mm -hmm. be um we were induced at 32 weeks she was in the NICU for about a month and so I fully she was born at three pounds five ounces which is like the borderline of there's going to be developmental stuff there's not like we need to monitor her for four years and I fully in my heart believe that if I wasn't a chiropractor or knew at least about chiropractic the way I do she would have more neurosensitivities, more neurodiversities. And I noticed them like, during times of high stress or when we're not doing as great with our sugar. And I think I, I struggled with the fact that was my birth for a long time because I'm like, I did all the things. I mm -hmm. did the chiropractic care, I did the acupuncture, I did all the things. But I feel like the Osito uh, allowed me to go through that journey so I can connect better with the parents that like mm -hmm. sit on the other side of our table to be knee to knee. It's like, I get it. I like get not being able to touch your kid. I get going home and not being able to take your kid home. Like I get that to my mm -hmm. core. Um, and so, uh, I don't know, I just always feel like we're life happens to us in a particular way. We don't always understand it in the moment, but it'll eventually make sense. And that's what drew me to chiropractic. And then what that other life personal life event that like drew me even further into, you know, I want to help every kiddo as early as being in the belly or the moms being able to help them in the preconception world before they have kids. I know one thing that I pose to our young patients that don't have kids, it's, hey, sometimes we plan for weddings for a year in advance, two years in advance, but we don't always think about our health that way. Like, mm. Hey, have we prepared our bodies a year in advance, even, you know, six months in advance to be able to be the healthiest versions of ourselves to then conceive and have a baby and, and kind of go down that route. So just thinking of our health and our personal health in a, in a different way. It was meant to be. That's how I think of it with your story. So thank you so much for walking us through your journey in chiropractic care. And I love every single part of it. I didn't know about chiropractic care until I had my second baby. I always assumed that chiropractic care was specifically for older people. And there are some like negative stereotypes about chiropractors, you know, that they just crack your neck and that's it. And then be careful because you can be maladjusted or whatever. And I heard that often in my community with my parents. And then it wasn't until my baby was breached. I found out that my second baby was breached at around 36 weeks. Uh, and luckily, my midwife was the one who recommended, you know what, go with a chiropractor. And I was like, wait, what would a chiropractor do <laughs> when I'm pregnant? And here I thought that I was going to get a C-section, that I was going to have to deliver him by getting induced. And I just had all of these, you know, just like worries that even though I had a plan in place that, you know, it might have been ruined. So we'll definitely talk more about that and my story. And I'm sure many patients that you've had and adjusted, I'm sure that it made a whole difference. But before we delve into the conversation, can you explain to our listeners what chiropractic care is, especially for those that were like me that had no idea about it? Yeah, so chiropractic care is a field of healthcare. I would say um, our goal with chiropractic care is essentially, and the way I like to describe it is we're utilizing the bone to stimulate the nervous system to do what we want the nervous system to do. So in our office, we do different scans to give us a window into what is your body doing. Um, one of them is giving us a window. It's called heart rate variability. It's giving us a window into um, is your nervous system stuck in fight or flight? Is it stuck in exhaustion or is it balanced? So it's that sympathetic, parasympathetic part of the nervous system. And later on, when we talk about specific to pregnant women, we'll talk about why that specific one is important. The second scan we're giving us a window into is into the autonomic nervous system. So how are the nerves that are coming out of your low back that are talking to your uterus, that are talking to your ovaries, that are talking to your small intestine, large intestine, those same nerves that are going to those organs are the same nerves that are going to your low back. So sometimes we'll notice the muscles of your low back. So we'll notice like, hey, someone has low back pain. You know, this individual maybe has, you know, heavy periods, irregular periods, uh, maybe con some constipation going on. Same nerves 
just going to those different areas. And then the third scan that we do gives us a window to how are the muscles firing along the spine. In pregnancy, it's super important because we want the muscles to fire equally on the left side and the right side. And when there's muscles mm -hmm. that are firing unequally, you have weight that's moving forward, which is your belly. But if your postural muscles from side to side aren't firing as equal or adequately, it'll make it for a more of an uncomfortable pregnancy or like super tiring because your body's not utilizing its reserves or its balance correctly. And so it's, you're just trying to fight off against, fight off gravity versus getting your body back into more of an, an inline position. So you have more energy throughout the day. And essentially chiropractic in a nutshell is our goal is to allow the body to communicate better so that you can live, you know, happier, easier, healthier life. There's so much anatomy and physiology involved with this and how much this can impact either the way that you live in your day to day that you don't even think about. And I didn't really know with, you know, after my first consultation, like how much the nervous system has so much to do with our day to day, whether if it's even like anxiety, acne, uh, you know, constipation. I had no idea. And so everything is so interconnected with our body and the nervous system that even a small adjustment can make a difference. And I am all for chiropractic care ever since my chiropractor saved my life and my babies. <laughs> um, and so with specific to women's health, um, either before, during, and after pregnancy, what would you say are the main benefits in seeking a chiropractor? I would say the main thing right now specifically is stress and anxiety. Um, so we know like even trying to conceive and have a baby, stress is a huge portion of it. Your body, mm -hmm. when your body's stressed out, it'll produce cortisol. Cortisol travels throughout our body. And so the more that our cells experience or feel this cortisol, it, your body's gonna build more inflammation. Inflammation is not only in our joints, which is pain, but also in our gut, our digestive system, the bloating, constipation, all the things. If we have autoimmune conditions, which a lot of people do, inflammation's not a good thing. And that all, you know, can go back to and originate. What's the, if I could, there's lots of things we can change right added to clean out the diet all these things but if there's one thing that I can change that's going to make a biggest impact into all of that what's the one thing I can change that's going to give me that 60 percent it's being able to help our nervous system regulate better and, and be more in that balanced place versus being stuck in fight or flight the scan results when we get them it, it balances in the middle and then there's a little box and it's hey it's either in that side of stress or it's nice and balanced and, and what does that look like so far starting point is in that state of stress when life happens and we know life is going to happen you know then we're you know we're super at the very end you know we're our body's trying to just survive so our goal is that we can get our starting point to be more of a balanced place so when life happens now we're in a place that we can manage and our body isn't having to figure out and survive and just have an overflow of inflammation throughout our whole body <laughs> if it's someone that's looking to get pregnant, you know, a lot of the struggles is like we live stressful jobs, you know, we not eating is great, all the things related to that. When we are pregnant, the main thing there is that we're sharing our bloodstream with baby. And mm -hmm. if we're stressed out, we're producing cortisol. So baby's experiencing life the same way we are, but just on the inside. And so there are studies that show that the way our baby's brains are developed is different and it changes. And an example, a prime example of this would be like moms that were pregnant during COVID and I was pregnant during COVID. I think even Instagram was flooding with like pictures of these like babies that were like stiff and like almost like six packs and like little muscles. And to me as a pediatric chiropractor, that lets me know, hey, maybe there was more stress in utero than we thought or we acknowledged or that we normalized. And the other sign for me when I'm looking at a baby is, or oh, are they able to hold their head up? And, and is their body really stiff holding their head up at those early couple days, couple hours after birth? And to us as pediatric chiropractors, that lets us know, hey, there's there's a lot of tension. The skeletal muscle, skeletal system just is more further developed. And that's exactly what happens when there is more cortisol. It develops that part of the brain versus the opposite to that. It develops a different part of the brain, a more of the emotional regulatory centers. It develops the viscerous, the heart, lung, liver. So just different type of development. And so I always go back to, I, I like chuckle because I remember when I was pregnant, or I've always heard my mom and abuelita say, oh, no se estresen, no se enojen cuando están embarazadas porque le va a afectar a su hijo, you know? And I was like, mom, there's no research. I don't know what you're talking about. And there is, there literally is research to show that my grandma from El Rancho was right, you know? There's this intuition that has been handed down to us. Um, and so what I love about 
you know, what drives me even more is like a lot of the stuff for chiropractic is rooted in our Latino, you know, ancestries and history. Like before mm. in, in different areas, they call them hueseros or, oh, voy con, um, ugh, I'm drawing a blank. That person La that sobada? Out, yes. La sobada. <laughs> Yeah. And so a lot of the body work is already in our, our culture and like where yes. we go to our go to. Um, we'll usually try that before we're, we'll go to a medication. And so um, I think that's why I'm so, you know, one, passionate about the work that we do. But two, I connect so well with our Latino community because I share that ancestry. I share that history. And uh, for me, I will always say, let's try a holistic approach first. If it doesn't work, you know, Medicine, surgery, therapies are all will always be there, but how can we at least honor the body's ability to heal first and then try other things and add other things to it? You mentioned that you are a pediatric chiropractor. Do all chiropractors have the same specialty? Like, how can people seek a chiropractor that is focused on what they're looking for depending on their needs? Yeah, so I would say if you're pregnant looking for a chiropractor, I would look for a chiropractor that has a Webster certification. Webster is a specific technique that helps stabilize the pelvis specific to pregnant women. You can do it on non-pregnant women, but this specific technique is super helpful and supportive and researched for pregnant women. If you're looking for a pediatric chiropractor, we take one class where we learn both things. It's honestly not enough. The, mm -hmm. We spend the majority, 95% of our time understanding the adult spine, which you know, for many years, which is a traditional thing. Like you, you knew it as, you know, the thing you go to when you're in pain and discomfort and adults. And so we're really good at adjusting adults. But I wouldn't say that every chiropractor that graduates is trained to see pediatric population. They're not small miniature adult spines. They have their own biomechanics, their own neurology. So it really takes additional classes outside of what we learn in school to be able to fully understand how to properly adjust a pediatric spine. Regarding the Webster technique, this was something that I also didn't know that chiropractors can be specialized in specific uh, trainings and they can even seek like certain populations. And the way that I heard of that was through my midwife, as I shared, where, you know, my baby was breached. And so she was like, make sure that you seek a chiropractor who specializes in, in the Webster technique. And so here I am Googling and I called one chiropractor and his assistant said, oh, yeah, he specializes in that. And it ended up that he didn't. So luckily he called me the day of my appointment. He's hey. I don't know what happened, but I do not specialize in the Webster technique. However, here is this contact. And luckily I did find this chiropractor, which I think he's like a miracle worker because it was right within the brink of me being 37 weeks. And 37 weeks is usually that cutoff where the if you ever want to do interventions to turn a breech baby, that is the cutoff usually. Otherwise you're going to deliver a breached baby. And I had days before the 37 weeks. So you can already imagine my anxiety. And so I scheduled that first appointment on that day. And my chiropractor, you know, did the consultation, he did the scanning, and there were a lot of things that he was like, we need to explore all of this stuff, besides you having a breached baby. So I was in red with all the <laughs> the bars i don't even know what they are but you know that yeah. in that scan i was all red and clearly things were never really that really were never brought to my attention and knowing that these were things that can be adjusted and anyway going back to my breach baby story he was like okay by thursday your baby's gonna flip and i'm like how is he this sure come that thursday this was a monday that thursday literally my baby turned and that was that same day where I had my a, a consultation with an OBGYN who would eventually would have done my C-section. Mm -hmm. And he was like, wow, that baby flipped. And I was like, yeah, I went to a chiropractor. And that OB was like, oh, don't go with the chiropractor after this. Don't even go in with any more interventions. And so I went back to my chiropractor. I was like, okay, this is what this OB said. This was someone that I really didn't establish a relationship with. You know, he doesn't know my background. I don't know who he was. I just had to have this consultation because that was something that my midwife wanted me to do just in case. Mm -hmm. And my chiro chiropractor was just very offended. He was like, wait, who is he in the position to 
tell you not to seek chiropractic when I know my job, I know that this can work. He told me the statistics, but I feel that oftentimes people don't know about this. Like the default is just getting a C-section or, you know, like the immediate instinct is to just go based off of what the healthcare specialist, you know, provide or what they have to say. But I feel, you know, there are some other interventions and holistic approaches and I'm all for it. And so what is your thoughts about this? Like, how would you approach this uh, with someone who probably has had a similar experience as me? They're definitely not my favorite conversations, (laughs) but what I always say is, you know, if somebody, if your dentist told you you needed a root canal, I'm not going to go and say, don't go get a root canal. You know, I'm not the professional in that department or that realm, but I understand where their hesitation comes from. And I think it comes from, research and not enough research you know like um, a lot of the information or the recommendations that are made in the medical world is medicine right this is going on you provide a medicine is funded by the pharmaceutical companies there's a lot of money that is out there you know they they pay for lobbyists in Springfield you know to change laws to allow for medicine but at the end of the day chiropractic care we just had our birthday in September and we're I think 130 years old you know so at the end of the day we're like young we're a young profession compared to medicine that's been around for years and so mm-hmm. I get their hesitation in the unknown not enough wanting to do more research and I agree you know for many years we did a lot of research on pain discomfort the opioid epidemic how do we get people off of being addicted to uh, pain pills how do we get them out of pain and not have to give them pills and so a lot of research went into that I can understand where they come from but I definitely agree with your chiropractor in that like, this is our specialty we're the experts in this field and I wouldn't be making a recommendation for somebody else's field that I'm mm-hmm. not the expert in so that's how I feel about that <laughs> but you know I'm glad that you listen to your instinct and a lot of times you know I always say listen to your mommy daddy gut listen mm-hmm. to your individual gut because you, you know what is right for you and I you know I can sympathize with that feeling of one professional is telling me one thing another professional is telling me one thing what do I do and who do I trust you know I always say whatever your gut tells you is the right answer you know and even for myself you know what I do in my lifestyle in my life might not be right for another family and what's right in the healthcare decisions that they make you have to at the end of the day be comfortable with the decision that you make. Obviously, I'm glad you went with chiropractic care. And I always say, you know, try the, you know, the less medicalized route first. And then if that doesn't work, that that's always available, you know, and chiropractic care. I'm glad your baby turned because you're at that kind of end, you know, you have less room, baby's bigger. The longer we wait, the still we can turn a baby can we can stabilize the pelvis increasing that chance for that baby to turn i typically like to recommend that women or individuals that are pregnant get adjusted when they're about 18 weeks it will start at 18 weeks because that's about the time when your body's starting to physically change and mm-hmm. if we start after that we're playing catch up and how do we get your body to stabilize then we have relaxin kicking into the system which is that hormone that relaxes all your joints and then you know, then there's a lot of instability. We were still trying to keep it all together so you can enjoy your pregnancy to the maximum. So I'd say, you know, preconception is best. The next best time is before 18 weeks. And if it's not before 18 weeks, the next best time is now. And that would I would say is like my recommendation for her. We're like, when should I start? Yes. And I felt, you know, as he was going through all of the analyses of the scan, I'm like, wow, this is a history load of issues and problems. And he was able to, you know, I wouldn't say cure it necessarily, but he was able to adjust me appropriately and I did improve. And so can you explain to us a little bit more about that? What kind of like focal points should one focus based off of like that scan? And what would what is usually your approach when you are adjusting an individual specifically who is pregnant or who just had a baby? Yeah, so the scans will give us a window into, I'm looking for two things. One, I'm, we're gonna do Webster technique for sure if you're mm-hmm. pregnant because we wanna stabilize your pelvis regardless of your baby's position. We want to create an environment, the most amount of room for baby, even when you're delivering, you know, one millimeter makes a difference. <laughs> um, and so um, if we can get your pelvis to be more stable in an in- in- inline position, that uh, vaginal opening will be, you know, at 
the position that you want it to more for delivery but prior to that if we can get your pelvis to be more stable equal left to you're going to feel better those muscles are going to be firing equally on the left and that's what we want and but the second part to that is we want to create an uh, ideal environment for baby to turn to a position of less stress ideally that's head down for some pregnancies and some babies that might not be head down and so Mm -hmm. there's been times where baby you know we adjusted baby didn't turn and it ended up being that baby had a short cord totally random like unlikely to happen not rare but it can happen you know so I always remind our our expecting parents like hey like head down might not be the ideal position like and and we have to honor the body and honor and trust that the body knows more than we know um, and what is best for this for this baby that's growing inside but so that's the pelvis stabilizing position th- stuff. We're going to look at your psoas muscle. That's the, t- There's four structures that hold the uterus together, just like a hot air balloon, hot air balloon with four chains. Two in the front would be like your round ligaments. Two in the back would be your psoas muscles. So we're looking to check and address those. If they're tight, tense, you're Usually it'll be opposite sides, opposite psoas, front r- right long, round ligament. And so baby will want to turn to p- that position of less stress. Mm. which may not be ideal. So our goal is to target not only stabilize, adjust the pelvis, but stabilize and release those structures as well. And then utilizing our scans. And the reason I'm passionate about seeing expecting parents early is because we can understand where their nervous system is at. So if an individual's nervous system is stuck in fight or flight, if you think of a cat in nature when it's trying to deliver and it feels like it's being threatened, that's essentially what fight or flight or stress mm-hmm. is. It's like we feel like we're being threatened. That cat's going to be like, I don't want to deliver right now. I feel, you know, someone's going to attack me and they're, it's going to eat me and my babies. So mm-hmm. I'm going to hold my babies in and not let them come out. When we are birthing, <laughs> if our nervous system has been in the state of fight or flight, it can, uh, you know, birth is a physiological thing like you can't say all right hit the on button i'm gonna give birth right now you know it's something that happens through our autonomic nervous system so if our nervous system is stuck in fight or flight it can slow down take longer uh delayed labor and so forth and so being if you deliver where most people traditionally deliver you're in a hospital and a hospital can be a little bit more sympathetic putting us even further down that sympathetic route and so if we can understand that early on we can change our nervous system allow the nervous system to adapt better get us into more of that balanced place so when we enter that stressful environment again we're in a manageable place versus if our starting point is here and now we're in the a stressful environment or that hospital like now we're further off mm. uh, to the other end but mm-hmm. even more important is that postpartum realm you know if we're already stressed out state of fight or flight you know think of the time of your life when you've been the most stressed and now you're waking up every three hours trying to keep another human alive like how much are you really going to enjoy that postpartum phase when your nervous system is still in fight or flight so if we can not only for the birth but let's get you regulated so that Mm -hmm. when you hit that postpartum realm phase like you're the best version of yourself to go into this new uh time of your life where you have to wake up every three hours we've never had to do that like exhaustion is real but exhaustion and stress is a lot harder to manage and i think a lot of the um, postpartum emotions hormones and things that happen um is because you know stress on top of this new time period um, and how can we help support our moms during that time so that they can you know express themselves and and feel better during that phase yes absolutely yeah and considering just like the the time that we live in you know it's interesting what you mentioned about those that had babies during the pandemic but also there are a lot of changes with our economy, you know, and oftentimes maybe women feel guilty about having a baby when there's so much uncertainty in our world. And I'm glad that at least through chiropractic care, there can be some level of intervention, you know, to help heal the body better. And especially when it comes to labor, I would say I I only went with my chiropractor for what, like maybe three weeks. But even within those three weeks, it made such a big impact in my labor, even my breastfeeding experience. And I had no idea that your labor can be shortened 
Or if you want to breastfeed, uh, your milk supply can be much higher, you know, through chiropractic care. And I had no idea. And so just knowing about these things and basically what my chiropractor said, I am all for, you know, just women or people seeking chiropractic care, especially to help relieve uh, the stressors that our body usually gets impacted through the environment, through society, you know, the issues that are happening in our world. So as far as with accessibility comes into place. How accessible is it, especially with people from our community? Do you think that it is accessible for folks? That's a good question. And I thought a lot about this question. And I think it just comes down to value, Mm -hmm. right? You know, what would, you know, what I, my baby, my last baby turned breech. And it's, I would have done anything to avoid a C-section. I did acupuncture. I did literally have spinning babies. I did it all. And I was, you know, the what I wanted at the other end of my investment, I was willing to do and, and to try. And I always, you know, I was like posed the question, what is it, how much would you pay to have, you know, a, a mom who's, who has a kiddo who isn't talking nonverbal, delayed for them to say, mommy, I love you. Even to say mommy, you know, what's the value of that? You know, what is the value of a new mom who has a colicky, fussy baby who feels like they can't connect with their baby because they just don't know what's wrong. And it isn't like the movies where it's like, oh my God, I'm just connected to my baby right now. And that's not happening. You know, what, what's the value of that? You know, and I feel like a lot of our parents who are getting these amazing results, who are getting these amazing kiddo who isn't sleeping or they're not sleeping in their pregnancy or enjoying their pregnancy, you know, like they can't go to work now. They're now bedridden, but if you can get up and walking and moving now, like what's the value of that? And so I feel like a lot of times what our parents will say is that, you know, I would pay three times what I paid to get what I got at the other end of that. So I feel like it is accessible and, you know, our fees are reasonable and at par with others in our community, but I've never turned anyone away for finances. If it was someone who was struggling or anything like that, it's, hey, how can I figure it out for you? You know, I didn't, my parents didn't grow up having a ton of money, but they invested in the things that they felt passionate about and and that they wanted. And, you know, we offer different payment plans to make it more accessible, affordable. And, you know, we, we recognize that it's, each individual's situation is different. And if there's anything that I can do to help support in any way, I'm here to help explore that with them. Yes, absolutely. And is chiropractic care, can people utilize their health insurance with it? Or does it just vary depending on the practice? Um, I would say it varies a lot depending on the practice. Some practices are in network, some practices are out of network. Chiropractic care right now, most insurance companies will cover if you have neck pain, mid back pain, and low back pain. They don't cover wellness. They don't cover if you're you had uh, you know a ten pain scale and then you drop down to five. You're not at zero, but you're a five, and it's been like that for a while. They don't cover when you plateau. But so it just it depends by insurance. It depends by the situation. It depends by the diagnosis. Lots of different factors. But it's it'll mostly it'll cover most adults. The big gray area is for sure kids. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if it's because there isn't a lot of research that and they don't insurance doesn't cover unless you have pain. And like, how can you prove that your one month old is having pain and and discomfort? And, you know, uh, and I hope that one day, you know, it is covered and that there is, you know, coverage around that but I always you know I remind parents like you know do they cover us for nutritional counseling do they cover us to go to the gym do they cover Mm -hmm. supplements like good healthy supplements no and that's an investment that we each have to make in our own families outside of I wouldn't call it health care insurance I call it more crisis care insurance it's Mm -hmm. there when you know there's a big red something happening to help support and protect us from that yeah absolutely So I know that you mentioned a little bit about just opinions that anti-chiropractic people usually have, but do you think that there are common misconceptions about chiropractic within the Latina community or that you have heard of based on your clientele? I think the most common misconception that I get is like when I go to a chiropractor once, I have to go for a long time or forever. And I always, you know, do I eat healthy for one month and then I'm like, I'm good for the year, you know? Do I exercise for a week 
every month and then I'm good for the rest of the month you know it's a part of my mm -hmm. wellness routine and you know some people incorporate acupuncture some people incorporate you know the type amount of food water that they're eating and types of food and so it's not that you have to go forever it's a choice that you end up making when you're empowered and learn about what chiropractic care truly is are mm -hmm. we great at getting people out of pain discomfort baby stabilized pelvic stabilized baby's not crying yeah absolutely we're like really good at that but the best use of chiropractic care is when you apply it as a wellness tool. That means, hey, your body is functioning at tip top shape. Magic's happening there, you know, like our bodies are like functioning at top potential, like but how do we keep that? And that's like the coolest part. And I would say we do it in all other parts of, the, of our of our life and our society trains us to, you know, even like a 401k or if, you're, if you have a W2 job, you know, we put a little bit away for retirement. We put a little bit away for retirement at each paycheck. And that's like what we do. We're trained to do that so that when we show up to, you know, retirement age, we're like, we have funds to spend at that age. But do we necessarily do it as a society or think of our health in that realm? You know, are we consistently eating, consistently working out so that when we show up to 65 or whatever age of retirement we are, you know, that we're moving great, we're feeling great, and that we are the healthiest versions of ourselves. <laughs> so I feel like a lot of times in our society, we train ourselves or we, we tell ourselves like, oh, you know, it must be old age. Oh, I hit my 30 and 35, 40, and I'm like, all of a sudden, all these symptoms started to develop. It's It must be, my, I'm, I'm hitting, you know, old age, I am must be getting older. And I, I resist that, you know, it's like, our patients are getting older, but they're feeling better doing things that they've never done before. And it's not that, you know, we're hitting old ages that we didn't apply enough wellness tools to give us, to bring us closer to health. Did we follow the average American diet? Maybe, you know, and so we have more inflammation, more gut issues that are happening in our health that, you know, we just thought were normal and that's just what we do in our society. But it's not until you choose different, you empower yourself to make those different choices. And that was a long answer to the common <laughs> uh, misconception, but it's, hey, like you, I'm empowering you to make what's the right decision for you. It may not be chiropractic care. Let's get you on a better diet. Let's get you on a be better, different track. Let's get you moving and, and, and functioning better from there. Absolutely. As far as with the Latine or just, you know, the POC community in general, do you think that they aren't as aware about chiropractic care compared to other ethnic or racial groups? Another great question that I wasn't sure the answer, you know, I think I hear it too often from every ethnicity, like, I wish I knew about chiropractic care early. And it like mm. breaks my heart every single time because... We don't know about chiropractic care. We don't know about prenatal pediatric chiropractor. We don't know that what an influence we can make when baby's still growing inside of our belly through chiropractic care. If we can reduce those stress hormones for mom, that baby's gonna develop differently. That baby's neurology is going to be different. And that can impact not only baby now, but the way I like to think of it is every time that I'm honored to adjust a pregnant mom or honored to adjust a child, I'm not only changing their life but i'm changing their offspring's life if they choose to go down that route you know because their development is going to be so much different than the path that society has us on you know mm -hmm. and so um i would say i hear that from just different ethnicities white asian everything you know it's like i wish i knew and i knew about it earlier so um you know, we try our best through social media, we try our best through different organizations that we participate in a part of that we send money to so that there is more research. Um, but at the end of the day, those are all self funded by our all our offices throughout, you know, the world, we don't have the type of pockets that the pharmaceutical industry has yes. to fund these big research projects. And so I, I guess I always say, you know, if you could share with one person the difference that it made in your life, I think it would make a difference. You know, if you can, if your story and your journey can make a difference in one other person's life, like how cool would that be that they can at least explore? Similar to my mom, you know, like someone would have told my mom, hey, have you thought about chiropractic care for Angie? You know, like it might help her with her immune system. Um, you know, I don't think I would have the autoimmune conditions that I have today. I don't think I would have needed IVF uh, the way I did need IVF. Like I am, uh, I'm fully believe that it was the, my overuse of antibiotics that added to my immune system, autoimmune conditions that I have today. And so for me, I'm empowered to empower other ones. It's okay. That was my life and that's okay. But that led me to help empower you to at least inform you and for you to choose if there is a different route for you. 
Yes, I love it. I do wish that I would have known about chiropractic care way before I tried to conceive my first baby. But yeah, like I'm glad that at least with you being here and me sharing and putting it out there, hopefully there can be other mamas or just people in general who can consider chiropractic care. And I, at first, I thought that it was going to be hella expensive, but it's not. It, it was doable. I would say that if it wasn't for this chiropractor, uh, shout out to Dr. Eric, like it would have, I, I feel like I wouldn't have had such an easy labor breastfeeding experience, postpartum experience because of chiropractic care. So I really appreciate you just amplifying your voice through social media and also, you know, by you being here just to educate future mamas or mamas that are currently pregnant or who are currently going through this journey to just consider um, at least having consultation. It doesn't hurt. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm going to switch gear and ask you Viva la Mami motherhood questions that I ask my guests. What is your meaning of motherhood? For me, means stepping into a version of myself that one, I didn't know existed, and two, that's not only teaching my children that, you know, being their mother, but teaching me things that I've never learned or pushing me to a version of myself that I hadn't been before. And while it's really hard sometimes, and, you know, the only motherhood that I know is part of it is, you know, generational trauma that I'm trying to unlearn and mm -hmm. relearn and repair in a different way, knowing better, doing differently. So I think that's what motherhood is for me. It's allowing me to p be the best version and a new version of myself. Yes. Yes, I love it. And final question, what is one tip of advice you have for Latina mommies? Always trust your mommy gut, mommy instinct. You will always have the right answer and, and that intuition because you know your little one the best. You know your little one in your belly that's growing. You know the little one at birth. You know your little one, you know, better than any provider will ever tell you. So just trust your gut. Just trust it. Yes. I apologize for not calling you Doctora Angie in the beginning because I do want to claim that, which power to you. <laughs> so Doctora Angie, where can people follow you? So they can follow me on our business page. It's at discoverbrightfutures.com. And they can also follow me on my personal page, which is at Angie, A-N-G-I-E, that is my full name, Resendez, R-E-C-E-N-D-E-Z, on our social media. And I did want to also share a special offer. If you are local to the Chicago area and you're concerned about yourself or your little one, or you're pregnant or we're looking to get pregnant in the near future and exploring to see if chiropractic care can even make a difference, we are offering our consultation, which is normally $150, just for the 20 listeners of the podcast in the month of November. Mention the podcast and you'll get that for only $47. We do have two offices, one in the Pilsen neighborhood of Chicago and then the other one in Arlington Heights. So whichever one works best for you, um, but we only have 20 slots. So if that's something that you want to explore, please give us a call and we'd love to help support. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity to the listeners out there. So y'all heard Mujeres, take advantage of that. And I will make sure to share all of that information in the show notes. But Doctora Angie, thank you so much. I really appreciate you sharing your expertise and knowledge about chiropractic care, especially as it relates to fertility, pregnancy and postpartum. So thank you so much for being here. Awesome. Thank you. I'm honored. Thank you for tuning in to the Viva La Mami podcast. If you like this episode, make sure to leave a review and write what episode really resonated with you. If you really loved it, share it on social media or with an amiga. As always, please subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening. Make sure to follow me at Viva La Mami on Instagram or visit vivalamami.com. Please note the information shared in this podcast is for educational purposes only and should not be replaced by your healthcare provider nor taken as professional advice. 